You're up. Oh, me? Yes. <laughs> and that's Standing Lock. That was our opening song. And I thought you were well, too. No. Well, <laughs> it's a good thing we're casual here, isn't that's it? Right. <laughs> Last week I got up and blubbered like, Wah! Good morning, everybody. I'm Reverend Rick Beatty. Welcome to Sunday service. Welcome you who are checking us out live right now on Facebook or whenever you're viewing this. We're so grateful for your presence and your presence. Uh, it's powerful stuff. I'm going to invite you to join me in our statement of being. This is a powerful, powerful statement of the truth. So ask us that we uh, do it intentionally together. God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. And that, my friends, is the truth. We've got a couple of announcements today. Again yesterday, someone came and did not know. We are open for services live. You can be in the building, you can be on Facebook Live or on Facebook or YouTube in the archives. We have four ways to connect. Um, but we're here, you don't need to call and reserve a spot, just show up. So try to get the word out. And please help us get the word out. Post that. Uh, Kim has got something up on Facebook. Share it if you're on Facebook. Share it with other people, that'd be great. Uh, next Saturday in the park, the topic is going to be how to maintain your peace in the midst of insanity. <laughs> I've been noticing just even going up and down Crooks Road between here and my house, it's 10.8 miles. I have seen more road rage in the last two weeks than I have seen in five years. And, and I think it's because people don't know what to do with their feelings. We talked about this yesterday. There's a lot of uncertainty in the air, a lot, you know. So we're going we're to share some tips about how to maintain uh, in the face of it. And, you know, other people are going to do what they're going to do, so we can choose. One of the things that I learned early on was that I have the power to choose how I live my life. And I don't choose to be insane. <laughs> More insane than I am all the time, right? Okay, please, if you haven't done so already, visit our website, unityofroyaloak.org. Take the picnic survey. We're having a picnic here on Saturday, the 21st of August, probably starting at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, but we need to plan. We, we want the proper amount of food. We don't want too much food. And we try to get some food trucks, and they are booked up for months. So we're going to cook. We'll get some chicken. We're going to do It's going to be a picnic. Um, I'll let you know more about that. But first, so we can plan, we need to know if you're coming and how many people will be with you. It's time to celebrate something. In the middle of all this, we're going to celebrate some things. And then uh, this one is a little different. Um, and I'm going to be very public about some things about Deb and Zan because Deb is being very public about them and I have her permission to do so. Our beloved um, Debbie Lepucky, who she and Zan and their family have been feeding us for six and a half years, maybe more. Not during the pandemic, of course, but um, Debbie's currently in the hospital. She's gonna be in the hospital probably for 45 or so days. She has um, a, very, a very aggressive form of leukemia and they are looking to get her into remission so that they can then begin the journey to uh, a bone marrow transplant, which involves killing off the bone marrow. Uh, so. She hasn't even started those treatments yet. They're, that's next. And that'll be a seven-day regimen and then a test again. And then if necessary, they'll repeat that. So a uh, long ways to go. Now here's the deal. There's one, two, three adult men in that household. And well, I'm including uh, Alex, four, and Zan and the, the, the three younger ones. Well, Gracie, she just graduated. Only Debbie cooks, period. So uh, uh, we were talking, Zan and I, and asked how we could support them. And she said, well, Debbie's really concerned about us eating well because 
she doesn't want us eating pizza every day. They're eating a lot of pizza. So I want you to listen. I'm going to share some things because I said we need to know what they like because, you know, it's, this is in our normal casserole brigade, brigade for someone just out of the hospital. It's typically one person. This is a whole family. So here's, she sent me a text yesterday or two days ago. The family isn't big on pasta dishes, so that's an easy one, so we've got to wipe that out. They don't like mushrooms, broccoli, or whole tomatoes in food, okay? They like Mexican and Oriental dishes. Mostly like meatloaf, chicken, white mostly, some eat dark, so both. Chicken casseroles are good, straight up fried chicken with mashed potatoes. Mexican lasagna, I'm getting really hungry now, I'm really getting hungry. Regular lasagna, Swedish meatballs, buttered noodles. Pizza Little Caesar, she goes, not every day, maybe twice a week, every third day. Uh, nothing spicy because they can eat it. I don't expect you to remember all this. If you are interested in helping us, um, I, I just think it's a wonderful turnaround. They fed us all these years. Can we now do the same thing? Because that's the kind of community we have built here. Uh, and we get an opportunity for some outreach in our own community, right, right, right here, right where we live. Get a hold of Kathy Jo, email her with contact information, or she's in the back back there. She has also a copy of this. She'll start getting a schedule together and kind of lining things up. Uh, and her email address is cj, well letters cj at unityofroyaloak.org, and she'll get your email, and then she'll get back to you. If you know her phone number, I'm not going to put it out in public like this, but if you know her cell number, you can call her. And uh, she'll coordinate that because it's going to take a bit of an effort. Kathy is, by the way, our congregational care coordinator. She's carried that on through the whole pandemic. So thank you, CJ. We appreciate it. <clears throat> okay. Now everybody take a deep breath with me. Ah. <sighs> Isn't it a glorious, it's been a glorious weekend. It's so much fun here yesterday with uh, our time in the park together, about 16 of us. It was a beautiful day. So the, when we started a new month. Yay. So I'm going to share with you Daily Word, and I do so with permission of Unity, the publishers of Daily Word. The key word is radiance. I love this key word, radiance. Just imagine that you are radiating light and love out from your very being. And the affirmation is that Christ's presence within is my radiant source of good. Can you say that with me? The Christ presence within is my radiant source of good. You don't have to figure it out. It's radiating from within you. It's radiating from something bigger than you. On a clear day when a stray cloud passes across the sun, I notice the suddenly diminished light. Then, looking up, I see brilliant rays of sunshine surrounding the cloud. Instead of hiding the sun, the cloud helps me see and appreciate the sun's radiance. As the sun lights the earth and, and is the source of its energy, the Christ, the divine presence within me, is my light and the source of everything that I need in order to live brilliantly and joyfully. Are you interested in living brilliantly and joyfully? Yeah. Heck yeah, aren't we all? When, a, when like a plastic, plastic passing cloud, an obstacle or challenge along my path may seem to dim my Christ light, I respond by looking up, by raising my point of view. I am reassured and strengthened knowing that the divine radiance is shining as brightly as ever. No cloud can dim the divine light in me. And the Bible verse for today is from uh, John 1, and verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Because it can't. Darkness is a no thing. Nothing at all. So it's prayer time. I know that Mary is here in the building holding space. I know that there are others out uh, in Facebook right now. I love this new way of, of making the assignments. And I think it saves you a lot of crazy making, doesn't it, Mary? <laughs> yes. So we give thanks. What does that mean, holding space? They're holding a space, this space, the space where you are, the space where you are is sacred and safe. 
Trusting and knowing that what needs to happen for each one of us can happen here. Because it isn't coming from Rick, it's coming from spirit. So what we need is flowing to and through us. I'm gonna begin a prayer. I will pause. I'm gonna invite those of you who are in the building to speak your words uh, of intention into the space. I'd love to hear that. And those of you at home, speak them in wherever you are or put them in the um, chat stream so that we can stand with you and be with you. So let's, let's allow ourselves to be centered. Father, Mother, and everything, God, we are all connected to each other. We know that there's but one life, one presence, one power. And it is from an awareness of our oneness that we now join as a community in prayer, lifting up those who may be having a physical challenge or an emotional challenge, a, a mental challenge. This is all, um, all going on all around us, God, we know it. But we know that you are the, the answer, you are the source of health itself. So we take a moment now to speak our words aloud or in our hearts. And today I'm remembering Debbie Lepucky and her whole family, remembering Kathy, Joe, and Lydia, who are both dealing with things. Remembering my dear friend Tammy, who is right now an event at U of M Hospital. Uh, we're seeing her off of it because she can communicate and do everything God she needs to do but breathe, so we know that that's going to change. We're careful about what we think about and what we, what we speak about. We're careful about our feelings not running away with us we, because we know that every thought we think, every word we say is a prayer. working on getting us some more cabling so I can be down here where I'm accustomed to being because this is so strange to me still to stand here still. All right, now I'm going to invite you to join me as we say and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now I'm going to invite you to prepare your heart and your mind for some meditation. Set aside anything that might distract you from your lap or your thinking. And take a deep cleansing breath with me. Sigh it out. <sighs> Two more times. Deep breath. Sigh it out. <sighs> deep breath in. <sighs> Into your presence, O oh God, do we enter now. Not a place external from us, but a place internal. We turn our attention away from the world's noise for a few minutes. And turn within to the place in us where you are resident, Christ enthroned in man.
And we notice our bodies begin to relax. Notice the chair that we sit in or the sofa or the bed, wherever we are right now, notice the support for you. Scan your body, starting at the bottoms of your feet all the way up to the top of your head. If there's any place where you're carrying tension, any stress there, just notice it and invite it to drain away. Bless your feet and your ankles and knees and hips, all the things that carry us around, your arms, your heart, Bless your voice and your eyes and this amazing brain that we have been given that can both react quickly to keep us alive and also reason. We embrace the day, this day, We know that we are a part of something so much bigger than we ever imagined. We know that within us is the same power that creates worlds. And it is in this power that we rest for a few moments as we allow the, the music to carry us and minister to us. We know, God, that we are in you and you are in us. sharing this experience of being alive. We open our hearts and minds to receive whatever you would have for us. Your love, your peace, your presence and your power. ourselves to the power of understanding and the power of will, and we open ourselves up to experience, right here and right now, the power of love. We are grateful for this community that exists in so many different places now. California to Florida, all over Michigan. We know that wherever we are, you are uniting us, connecting us. We give thanks for this community that we co-create. We give thanks for this life that lives us. We give thanks for love. And so it is, always, and in all ways. Amen. Thank you. 
Tony Camaletti and our Royal Oak music team, God bless you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you can give a little, a little love. Oh, and yes, I've got a limp, so. I'm telling you, getting older is not for like the weak at heart, right? Oh. So this is week three of a four week series of talks that uh, Kim and I are doing out of uh, the message and the music. Normally, I come up with some ideas because she hounds me and hounds me like, Rick, what are you gonna talk about next week? Um, and for the next month, and then we, she figures out music, but this one, we, we pick up songs together and we look, we explore the message in the song. So I want you to catch a little bit of that song that was just done, which is, um, what's it called, Kim? Wake Up. Wake Up. It's from All Sons and Daughters. It's a beautiful song. I was walking the wayside, lost on a lonely road. I was chasing the high life, trying to satisfy my soul. All the lies I believed in left me crying like the rain. Then I saw a lightning from heaven, and I've never been the same. I'm going to climb a mountain. I'm going to shout about it. I am a child of love. I've been reading the wrong song, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Well, well, it is a good song. That should be the end one. Why don't somebody throw something at me? The one you just read is the end song. It is the end song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this one. Wake up, wake up, all you sleepers. Stand up, stand up, stand up, you dreamers. Hands up, hands up, hands up, believers. Take up your cross, carry it on. What cross are you carrying? You ever think about that? What cross are you carrying? This is, remember, we're interactive here. This is not pay-per-view. Being the oldest in your family. Being the oldest in your family, me too. And all the stuff that goes with that, right? trying to make everybody happy and keep everybody together. It's exhausting. I gave it up a few years ago. It's very wonderful. Every once in a while it tries to creep back and I push it away. What cross are you carrying? The only conservative and the liberal environment. The only liberal and conservative family. Well, the only, whatever point of view you're at, being the only one in a family that's the other way, that's, a, that's tough. Sometimes. It's not even the family's evenly split. Mine is about evenly split. We just don't talk about it. <laughs> it's no point. We're, we're giving up trying to c convert each other, right? What, do you, what cross are you carrying? You don't think I'm going to share it? Mary? I think a lot of us, are, including me, are dealing with loss. Yes, loss and grief, which comes from loss, right? Um, I, I have had the experience of layers and layers and layers of it. And a couple of days ago, I was just almost unable to breathe or move. Now, fortunately, I have a direct line to Mary. <laughs> but it's, she reminds me of what I already know, right? That's what all we're doing. That's, that's all we're doing. Our belief system is quite simple here in unity, and it's not easy. And, and you can choose. And so if you find yourself stuck in some grief, in loss, reach out to somebody. Me, one of the prayer team, um, somebody, reach out. You know, Send us an email. We'll get, it, we'll get somebody in touch with you. It's because it's a lot of challenges going on in our world. Okay. I want to share with you on what Mr. Fillmore wrote, uh, who was our co-founder, about love. <clears throat> And it really is love divine compared to personal love. And this is from the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. Love is a divine attribute, meaning it's a quality of God. It's an idea in the one mind. God is love and love is God. Up the street on my way home, there's a, I think it's a Nazarene church in Troy, maybe, or Clawson. And they have a sign out on their marquee that says, God is love. Oh, yes. That also means that love is God, right? And you and I are made in the image and after the likeness of that it means that we are love as well. The difference between divine love and human love is that divine love is broad and unlimited, a universal and harmonizing power. Love is a power that attracts, binds, and harmonizes all things together. Um, and then it's easy to slip into 
like personal love, like I love you, and if I loved you, if, you, if you'd loved me, you'd do this, that, and the other thing. That's our taking the concept of divine love and making it really personal and taking a lot of the juice out of it. Not that it's bad. Human love is based on personality. And Mr. Fulmore said it is selfish, lawless, and fickle. Can I get an amen? Because it can be both, right? It can be fickle and it can be fabulous. Both are true. In reality, there is only one love. When man expresses divine love in limited ways, he makes a separation in consciousness. We decide to separate it. Not this universal love, but really specific. And more and more I see that happening because we're, we're losing our connection to community and we just have our little micro family and that's who we love. But that's not what the master teacher, what our way shower called us to do. Divine love will establish one in fearlessness and courage. Does that interest you? To be fearless and courageous. For God gave us not a spirit of fearfulness, but a power of love and discipline. By establishing, by establishing ourselves in the consciousness of divine love and expressing that love at all times. All times. Not sometimes. Not just with the people we are like. And I'm going to get into that in a moment. Um, we are here. We are helped to fulfill the command, love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless the one that curses you. Pray for them who despitefully use you. Big order. Big, take a breath. <sighs> Big order. The development of divine love has its place in demonstrating supply. When love is established in the consciousness, it will draw to us all that we require to make us happy and contented. All that really belongs to us. We develop love in our heart by asking daily that the infinite love of the Father be poured out upon us. So here's a Here's a good admonition to do prayer work, right? We talk a lot about spiritual practices here. So Father's love can be poured upon us by praying, meditating, and affirming that we are one with and express at all times the perfect love of God. And you do it ahead of when it's happening. You, you get into the habit of declaring that truth to yourself over and over and over again. Eventually the subconscious mind will catch up. It takes it a hot minute. Have you noticed that? Some of us has taken 40 or 50 years to get there. So most of us would agree that God is love and love is God. I mean, the scripture talks about it. All the sacred writings talk about it. Um, and as I said, our sacred writings say that we're made in the image and after the likeness of God. Well, that means both spiritual, but it also means in terms of the qualities of the I am, the Christ consciousness, of which love is probably the principal one, the primary one. So we are children of love, this talk is titled, by the way, Love Child, but not the Diana Ross version of that song, just so you know. We are children of love, which means we have the same quality or consciousness that God does. This is the truth, I believe it is. What are we doing with it? What are we doing with it? When I came here seven and a half years ago, uh, we, we did some talking about who we were as a community. And once in a while we touch base on that. Probably do it as more of us come back together. And we came up with a tagline. In fact, I still have my shirt that says, Love is on the move. And love is on the move in a lot of ways. Love is on the move through our outreach team, who are still never missed a beat during the pandemic. Love is on the move as we gather to help uh, Debbie and Zan's family, right? Eat nutritious meals. Love is on the move when we establish here in this sanctuary an atmosphere of openness, that no matter who you are, how you look, who you love, what color you are, you are welcomed here. And not just welcome, but celebrated. And why? Why, Rick? Because we know that each one of us is, a, is an expression of God, a unique expression. Every single person, every life form on this planet reflects the divine presence. As I mentioned, we're, you know, we're not talking about being in love with someone. We've been compartmentalizing our lives for a long time. A voracious appetite for energy, coupled with a blind eye to the effects on the environment, is one way of operating without love, right? We're part of all of it, a bigger system, but we, we, we don't want to always pay attention to it. I'm going to share with you a scripture 
from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 12, verses 28 to 31. This is called the first commandment. One of the scribes came near and heard them dispute. The fact that they were fighting about who, um, which commandment is the first of all, right? The legalists were fighting about that. Jesus answered, the master teacher said, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. And that's a restatement of the Old Testament Shema, Israel's call to worship, right? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, the Lord alone. Now, we have a biological hindrance to loving everybody, unfortunately. And it's called the amygdala. It's the reptilian part of our brains. It's the very first part. We call it reptile brain. We call it brain stem. It's all the same. It's a part of us that emerged first. Human beings in our current form are, have been on the planet about 450,000 years. The Earth is 4. almost 6 billion years old, according to current estimates. So we're relative newcomers here. So we showed up on, the, on this planet as a process of the evolving nature of life itself, pouring itself into form continually. And we started out with a brain stem that was whose sole job is to keep us alive. Fight, flight, freeze, feed, or fornicate. Those were the things, those were the options. Keep the species going, feed it. Um, and when we don't know what else to do, that's where we operate from. And we draw, we draw a tribe to us based on people who, this, this was initially, based on people who look like us, talk like us, walk like us, believe like us. That's why in your family you have trouble because people drawing a tribe to them based on where they are. And we get stuck there. We get stuck there because the, 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 the amygdala doesn't know how to do more than that. Where can we do more than that? Where do we have to get to, to, to come out of the automatic response that, well, you don't look like me, therefore you're not my tribe. Where do you think that happens? Heart would have a piece of it, but in terms of our brain evolution, the most, the current, the newest part of our brain is the frontal cortex, the neofrontal cortex. That's about 100,000 years you know, back in our evolution now. You have to get to that place. And I had some dramatic experiences of getting caught when I was driving down a mountain into Louisville, caught in the amygdala, caught in this fight, flight, or freeze response. And I was afraid. I was afraid in ways I've never thought I could ever be afraid before. To get yourself up into the frontal cortex, there are some things you can do. One of them is to shout out random numbers. Because the, 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 the part of us that reasons will grab on and say, I don't understand why he's doing that. And you can't do both. You gotta break the cycle. So when we see people who aren't like us, who look differently, rather than go, rather than react automatically, oh, they don't look like me, they're not like me, they don't love like me, they're not part of us. No, we are part of us. This is a process that takes making a decision, and it also takes giving up our story about who is different than we are. It takes giving up the story. And unfortunately, there's a whole lot of storytelling going on in our brains all the time. So this love that, sh that it's a love that says, come follow me, love others, it's not easy. It takes sustained effort to catch your judgments, to catch the places where you're stuck, to catch the automatic response. We have a word for that process. It starts with an M. It's called being mindful. Mindful, can I mind the mind? You've heard me say it a hundred times, I'm sure, probably more. The principal job that we human beings have is to mind our minds, to catch our thinking, to find it going down into the cesspool and pull it back. Meditation is a good way to do that. Reading is a good way to do that. Journaling is a good way to do that. I can't tell you what way will work for you. Try them all. Do something. Do it. I want to share another scripture. Because it touched me. This is from the book of Romans. Chapter 8, verses 35 and then 37 and 39. So who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine 
or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. In all these things, hear this, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We're more than conquerors. We're champions. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor depth, nor height, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, who is the Lord, who is the I am, who is the life in us, right? We can't be separated from it, but we can ignore it. We can't be separated from this love, but we can ignore it. We can't be separated from this love, but we don't have to demonstrate it. So I come back to my question, if love is on the move and love is God and God is love and we are created in the image and after the likeness of God, then what are we doing with this love? What are we doing? Now I think that we as a community have been pretty extraordinary in many ways. But I'm finding it's a struggle sometimes, you know, after so many months of wearing a mask all the time and then not wearing one, I was judging people who weren't wearing them and then I wasn't wearing one. So it's automatic. It's, this is, it happens to all of us, right? It happens to all of us. The question is not to beat yourself up. Now here, who do you think it's most important that you love first? Yourself. Yourself. Why, do you, why is that? I agree with you. Why is that, do you think? Because the origin of things. Yes. Is yes. If you can't see the love of God in yourself, how are you possibly going to see it in somebody else? And, and love them. So loving myself sometimes means um, taking the day off. I'm not good for work today. I'm, there's nothing useful happening. Maybe I'll mow the yard. Loving myself means taking my vacation. Loving myself means calling a friend when I'm sitting in my stuff. Right? If I'm swimming in the, in the toilet, I don't want to call somebody else who's also there. I want to call somebody who can help me get up out of there, right? And that's why we're together. That's the purpose of community. We're just reminding ourselves of what we all know all the time. And you all remind me more than you know. More than you know. We're really, really, really fortunate here to have an amazing team. Mary, how many prayer partners are there right now? 14 or so, I think? Yeah, we, And they hold that space for all of us all the time. And, and, um, and we're constantly uh, texting each other about what's going on in our community. By the way, if you'd like to get a wellness call from our prayer partners or you need prayer, let me know and we'll get you connected to them. So this song is about, about love, about being a love child. What, what would that look like? What would it mean for you to operate from love all the time? Never to be afraid. Fly high when others you are encountering are flying low. Fly high when you encounter others who are flying low, absolutely. Because if you try to say to a person you should do something different, that's not helpful. What's helpful? To model the behavior, to do it. Right? To teach is to demonstrate. We're all teachers. I'm, I'm not your paid professional. I mean, I'm just your paid professional one, but we teach each other all the time. So it said, all sons and daughters, we have seen the pain that shaped our hearts and in our shame we're still breathing because we have seen the hope of your healing. Why would we bother working on ourselves and finding the places where we judge and work through the, the, the judgments we have in the past? I just spent about seven weeks writing papers that let me dive deep into my family history and who I am and come to a new sense of what I'm about. Not, not a, you know, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but, it's, it's, it was a, but I do want you to get a sense of taking a look at your evolving belief system. The master teacher said over and over again, love each other, love each other. Do what I've done. That's the greatest demonstration. I can't tell you what you should do to make love real, but I can call you and promise to you that it's the only way that we're going to change the world is if we can love each other. God bless you.
So this is the time that we're going to receive the offering. If you have something that you're going to give today, I'm going to invite you to hold it in your hands or hold the image in your mind and we'll say the blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God.
my friends, there are many ways that people contribute to this community. People like Jeb give his gift of music. Others do the same. Laura's been pulling weeds. She could use some hand out there. Marianne's been helping a bit. Uh, the choir sings. They give of themselves that way. Uh, many contribute financially, obviously, or we would be closed. And we've been fortunate. We're, we're right, our nose is just right at the waterline, and it's okay. I'm all right with that. Uh, for those of you who are at home, you can contribute via our website, unityofroyaloak.org. There's a button there labeled Donate, and uh, we process the credit cards and e-checks with Tidely and credit cards with PayPal. You have your preference, your choice. Pray with me, please. God, we give thanks for these gifts, for the people that co-create this community, that are giving their energy, their love, and of their substance, their, their resources, that we might continue to proclaim this simple message that we have the power to choose and that God loves everyone and that we are children of love. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. I want to do a little bit different version of the prayer for protection with you. This is what we've uh, done a couple of times on the prayer, prayer calls uh, during the summer. And it's the, the, the normal piece is, right, the, the light of God surrounds us. And so I'm going to say that, and I'm going to ask you to respond, I am the light of God. So it's going to be, the light of God surrounds us, I am the light of God, the love of God enfolds us, I am the love of God. Got it? Yeah. Makes sense? Okay. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Say that again. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is. All is well. Oh. 
Adam? Oh, good. So I, I just wanted to say, uh, I wanted to make a comment. First of all, thank you, Tony, for being here. Um, no mask shaming here. You can wear one or not. That's your choice. I, I heard of a preacher somewhere who said anybody who wore a mask to his church, he would let him in. I'm like, really? Really? I, that's the only time I become a literalist when there, there's a, a verse in Matthew that says, woe to them who lead my people astray, right? Better to tie a millstone around your neck and jump into the sea. So if that, if that is something you need to do, do it. We have, and by the way, Henry Ford Health System has given us a bunch of masks, so um, we have lots and lots of them, so. Do what you need to do for you at this time. We, and let's just keep looking out for each other and let's make love real. Thank you so much. Have an amazing week. And visit with each other if you want to in the sanctuary. We're still not going back to Fellowship Hall, but you can sit, visit here. And because this door is coming apart and I haven't got a workman out here yet, we're going to exit through the, the main doors. God bless you. Have a great week.